Hey, ladies, welcome to episode 108. I am so excited for this because y'all, we told you at the end of the year we were going to do this, and today is our first one, and we've invited Samantha for some input. Why? Well, many reasons. One, we love her. Two, she's brilliant. Three, look at how pretty she looks today. Yes. <laughs> if you listen to the podcast, you might want to check her out on um, <laughs> YouTube. Anyway, we are going to do the top five pros of consignment. We did this in episode two. We painfully watched that again to (laughs) remember what we had said back then. And we are going to revisit those five. We are going to discuss them if they've changed at all. If they're yeah. still on the top five, maybe there's one that's not. Maybe something's taken its place. Let's see. What do you think, ladies? I think that's going to be so. I'm I'm looking forward to this. All right. So after you watched the video this morning, I texted Molly this morning and I was watching the our second episode, which was the top five pros of consignment. And I was like, this is so painful to watch. And Molly said, oh my gosh, we look so young. Like, how did that happen in two years? Like, how have we aged this? <laughs> it's horrifying. It's horrifying. You know what I told her? If this continues, we're going to stop with the YouTube. We don't need the facial recognition, <laughs> the changes. We're just going to go to podcasts. So we don't have to look at what changes in a matter of two years. I, it was it's shocking. Horrifying. It was shocking. Libby yeah. literally looks like she should wear diapers. She's a toddler. She looks so young. It was crazy. It was so long ago. I probably wasn't even like born yet or something. I know. You <laughs> weren't even, you, we, we, there was no Samantha, at least not in our lives at that time. <laughs> we hadn't been blessed yet with that presence. So. Yeah. Yeah. So this is super, super great thing to discuss because when we did this episode two, we hadn't fully come to what our real full motto for consignment chats is, Libby. And what is that? Well, we want to make sure that every reseller is consignment ready. And it's not that you need to be a consignment seller. It's not that you need to, you know, run a consignment business. It's just you have to have that as a tool in your toolbox and be consignment ready so you're not leaving money on the table. And we didn't know that was where we were going when we did episode two. We were speaking primarily to consignment sellers, but our circle has widened so much and we realized what a a void this was in, in the market in YouTube is to make sure that resellers are consignment ready and we are here to do it. Yes. All right. This is going to be these top five reasons are going to be more geared to why you should be consignment ready and less geared to why you should run a consignment business. Yeah. Because we all incorporate different aspects into our reselling business. Consignment is a very large piece of my business. It's not the whole business. Um, It's the minority of Molly's business. And the majority uh, of Samantha's she consignment. She's consignment ready and she takes consignments. She can do it at the drop of a drop of a hat, right? Not that. <laughs> and Samantha, where do you fall on that spectrum? I am mostly consignment, probably 90% now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. And there are right. reasons why we do, why Samantha and I do it as the uh, majority of our business. And there's reasons why Molly is consignment ready, although it is the minority of her business. All right. And, and I just want to say, I did not review this episode, and I knew about this five minutes ago, so these are some very candid answers on my part. Yeah, that's what we like to keep you on your Listen, toes. <laughs> we watched it just to get the five and to cringe, to be cringy about ourselves, but I don't have notes. We we love just to naturally do it. Mm-hmm. So, But I had to remember the top five. I had to write that down so we could go with it. So number five, y'all. Big word, word we all love. Any of you watching, listening, everybody loves this word, freedom. Yes. Freedom. Mm-hmm. Freedom. Let's talk about freedom, friends, in the reselling slash consignment business. Well, going. I mean, Samantha, I was coming from uh, working at a bank and, you know, being tied to that or being tied to the whims of my bosses if it was going to be working a weekend. Um, I worked in the mortgage industry, so it was 
it was pretty, you know, high pressure uh, at that point in time. And uh, I did not have a lot of freedom. I had to miss lots of uh, kids events and baseball games. And, um, you know, when I had an inspirational thought, this is one of the big things for me, when I had an inspirational thought, or when I feel like working is not always between the hours of nine and five. Sometimes it's late at night, and sometimes it's early in the morning. Now I have the freedom to do that and put the time in when those when I feel like working, when those creative ideas uh, pop into my head. Oh, I yes. like that. I'm going to say this is still super applicable in the top five reasons. I think it should stay number five. Yes. I like that. So my freedom, the what really hits me with freedom is if I go back over the last two, three years of my life, I've had a lot of, and I'm not going to get emotional. I'm just going to be factual because there are going to be other people that go through this. I had a lot of personal family loss that took a lot of my personal time to go deal with a, a dear friend and her loss and helping her. And then my mother this past year and to be able to be supported by Libby, by our community, by our our family within our consignment business um, that all are our customers that have become family to have that support while I go through that and the ability to check out and fully focus on where I was most needed for my family and loved ones at that time and still know that if I had a moment and I needed some freedom from that, I could just call Libby and say, I'm going to pop on the live sale Thursday night. I need, I need a, a clear space or I just got some things here where I'm staying. I'm going to list them and throw them up. And, you know, it, it gave me so much freedom to truly be there when I was needed but still have this for support and an outlet. And that was priceless, priceless. Amen. Yeah. So mine's a twofold. So I feel all of that. And I have had a lot of that, especially lately going on. So I love that I can be there for my family and I can work my business at 10 PM because that is what's happening right now. And that is fantastic. That freedom is the reason I left healthcare and it is amazing. The other side, though, is because we were just talking before this, uh, uh, before this call about sourcing. And I think that freedom is twofold because I have the freedom of not having to rely on thrift stores. And that is a big freedom for me because I only have like two or three of them here and they are terrible. <laughs> and so I have the freedom to still have inventory when I say I want it, wh where I want it. They bring it to me. And it's all at my discretion. And that freedom has been fantastic as well. Nice. Right. So you got a solid number five staying where it is. What's number four, Wait, Molly? I got one more that's oh, oh. me in the in the freedom part that you guys should more talk about. I mean, you you can get your financial freedom through this. Yeah. yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, to me, freedom is a word we all love. So is the financial aspect. So you can build your financial freedom through this too, by doing things and doing them. And we have a lot of episodes that help you kind of do that too. <laughs> all right. Moving on to number four. This one is near and dear to my heart. I know Libby's. Samantha, you can speak up, obviously. Giving back. Mm -hmm. This business allows you to give back in so many ways that a lot of people don't even think of. Yeah. Start with your community. What do you think? Like the full circle income in your community. Yeah. So consignment, you're recycling goods and money back into your community. I mean, sometimes it's the larger community, um, but a lot of times for us, it's a smaller community of our consigners. They're able to purchase things at, you know, prices that they can afford and feel good about, and they can earn money by consigning. And just that full circle feel of community and providing people with, with these options, it, it feels good. Um, so there's that just whole feel good of consignment itself. But then there's a whole other thing. It opens up consignment, opens up a lot of avenues to to giving back and working with local organizations. And um, like, for example, we have I don't even know how many organizations it is at this point that we take donations for. We process them and then we give them a check. 
Um, I mean, and there's so, way more to that. We have a I'm whole branch quick, of our business that deals with that. But yeah, I'm going to quick do how that works real quick. Yeah. So like if you are part of a nonprofit and you want to earn money through this, you can call Conscious Consignment. You can open up an account for that nonprofit and then you put in a newsletter or whatever. We can give you logos. You send it out to your um, customer base for your nonprofit, your supporters, your donators, all that, and say, hey, if you this is another way you can support our nonprofit. You can consign through this consignment business. And the percentage of that that sells goes directly into our account to our nonprofit. And it's such an easy thing for any reselling business or consignment business to do. It is such an easy thing. It gets more product in. It helps your business get out there. But you are giving back to so many nonprofits in your community. I mean, and how many, uh, this was always been my favorite part of the business. Uh, the idea was born over Indian food because Molly and I do our best brainstorming over Indian food. Uh, but anyway. Preferably <laughs> a buffet. Yeah, it's the, the, not only giving back, but the education we've received and the amazing people we've met through this process have it's been it's been life altering i say it all the time it's been life altering to kind of give a different platform to these people and let them speak about maybe what they're going through why they're raising the money and to have that connection and put that out there is just it's life changing and depending on who you work with you don't know how your life is 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 going to be changed so sometimes when you have those difficult customers right i always say for every like rotten person we meet or you know somebody that says something horrible there's like 10 of these amazing people that we get to work with i mean dedicating their lives to so many cool things amazing yeah amazing it's just to me the people we've met and the things they have done and how so many people like i think about we just did the episode on happiness um how many people have had the most horrific tragedy happened in their lives and they've turned it into this most beautiful, amazing nonprofit in memory of that loved one. And I think, gosh, I hope I'm the kind of person if that ever, God forbid, happens to me, that that's how I would handle it. Because I am just so in awe of people that do that. And we've been blessed to meet so many of those people. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. So we have the thought, thoughts, thoughts on, on on giving back, or do well, we just nail it? <laughs> just you, yeah, you guys nailed it, and you do in your business. I I follow all of your pages, and I, I watch all those fundraisers and all the things you guys do, and and even how inspirational you are to other businesses like mine, and the things that I take away from yours that I want to instill in mine. And anytime I think about collaboration over competition, I think of country consignment. I think of you ladies and how you would rather work with people than than compete with them. And I try to instill that in my own community. It's an inspiration. And I hope more people catch on to that for sure. I think it's a thing. I do. Yeah. I yeah, think it's, it's a thing. thing. <laughs> I think it is, dadgummit. <laughs> All right. Wow. That was an emotional little bit there, y'all. <laughs> All right, I got another one. Y'all want number three? Sure, why not? Sustainability. And I know we have a lot to talk about with sustainability. Um, It's something all three of us love. And I just want to throw out, because we did this in an episode of Spotlight, um, is Maggie Weber. I think she does a great job with her upcycling of items. Libby and I have done some of the upcycling, which is part of that sustainability Mm-hmm. But I feel like Maggie takes it to a whole nother level. Oh, she's next level. She's <laughs> next level. Next level upcycling for sure. Yeah. So check her out if you haven't yet, y'all, because um, she does some pretty amazing things. I'm, I got to get my sewing machine out, I think, and learn some more. But anyway, talk I know. So also, if anybody listening is a List Perfectly subscriber, or if not, there's a link below, um, they have listing parties now, and Maggie is hosting listing parties, and she ta- she actually has one in an hour today. Mm-hmm. Um, and she talks about sustainability and all these wonderful things that she does. And of course, we go off topic, and it's so inspirational, and hearing all the other things in the community that people do. I 
I just love recycling things. I love being able to take something that would have got thrown in the trash or thrown out and giving it a second life. That's, Mm -hmm. I I just love that. There's so many ways that we do that in our business and it makes me so happy. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, consignment itself is really really recycling, but Mm -hmm. yeah, next level is upcycling. And I, I think I've mentioned in other episodes, I'm actually a micro, well, I'm not, I don't practice microbiology, but uh, I am a microbiologist, environmental scientist by training. Um, and it was always so discouraging to to work in a lab and to do these things and not see the results and not really feel like, I always felt like I was hitting my head up against the wall. But um, with consignment, I have the outlet and I can actually see the difference it's making in people's shopping habits and how it is making a better world for us more so than, you know, doing the research. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. Absolutely. That was awesome. Just not for me. Um, But it's so cool to, to be able to take that background and take the fact that, you know, that was my passion and incorporate that into a consignment business. Like you're actually walking the walk, my friend. I feel like I didn't like waste my education. Right. (laughs) <laughs> right. Oh, I guess I can say the same thing because I, I teaching was my thing. So I guess I'm still kind of teaching. Definitely, yeah. definitely. But it was preschoolers. Can we all? We're kind. Well, I'm kind of like a pre, we're kind of like preschoolers. <laughs> I know you use some of those tip, those tricks on me sometimes. I do they work. <laughs> oh, I used to my husband too. Choices are such a good thing when you're really looking to do one thing. Choice theory is the bomb. <laughs> oh, don't let me on to that. Don't clue me into all your tricks. I'm so, happy not knowing. Yeah, sustainability <laughs> is, I think, a part of a large amount of reseller slash consignment business people, their heart. And I think even if they got in the business not having that in the forefront of their minds, over time, that becomes part of what they learn and see and realize and it becomes a part of them. So I love that part. And it makes our customers or our clients feel better too. Um, I, half of my consignment clients, when I am talking about consignment and how much I love it and what I do, I will be talking about certain items and they're like, Oh, I have those items, but I, I I don't want to get rid of them or I don't want to. And when I keep talking and they hear that I'm going to find a home for that, that somebody else is going to cherish it and love that item and really want that item, they're better at letting go of things and decluttering and and healing in their own little journey over there because they know that it's it's not just going away. Somebody's not throwing it out. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Number two. And this, we talked about resellers being consignment ready. All the three first things we've talked about really go across the board, whether you're a reseller or a consignment business. This one is a real reason why you resellers need to be consignment ready because life happens and low cost, number two, is important. Definitely. You just start up with, you don't need money to start. You just start. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. 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 Low cost. So this is good because we have Libby and um, Samantha who both do more consignment. So they're really low cost. I put my money on the line more. Um, because <laughs> I'm a, a crazy sorcerer. So yeah, the low cost. Like what? what is like necessary and involved on the consignment end of this kind of business financially. Nothing. I mean, you could start up for really, now you need a phone. I would say. Phone, tape. (laughs) Yeah. Basic packaging, which I don't pay for. People give it to me. Yeah. Um, I used QR codes for the longest time, so I didn't even have a printer. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's not much. There's not really much you need to get started. Nothing should be holding you back. If you say, oh, I just want to save up and and you're not putting anything at risk, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which let me try to sell these. 
Yeah. My husband is one when I say, oh man, that's so cool that vase just sold for a hundred dollars. He's like, yeah, but you only get to keep half of that. And he is the most negative person in the world. (laughs) But the other day when I'm purging, I'm finally going through old inventory and purging stuff that has been sitting and not. And I'm like, man, that's kind of a bummer. I paid $12 for that. It didn't even sell. And he's like, whoa, you lost $12. I'm like, yeah, see, see. Mm hmm. Yeah. Different perspective there for sure. Totally different perspective. Yes. Yes. It is a scary thing as a reseller who, who sources and doesn't do consignment um, because you are putting it on the line. I mean, you have to think. And sometimes if you're madly insane, like I get Libby's witnessed it. I literally, when I go to source, I can have a game plan in my head because I'm worried about cost, right? I want to keep my cost as low as possible because it's my financial risk. So I go in, let's just say goodwill, and I've got a game plan. I am going to focus on jeans and shoes. Boom. It never happens. Well, no, because the purses are on the end cap. Or, I know. Or the- and oh uh-huh. my God, is that a Michael Kors? Could that be <laughs> Kate Spade? I- it never happens. And my brain, I just start sweating. The adrenaline starts going. I start sweating. And I'm just like a mad person. I, I am filling the cart. You really have to think about your cost because you can bite yourself in the hiney quick. And I've done it with some items. I do try to keep track what we do. And you can see it on some of our videos that I've done hauls with. Um, Nick and I have a system where I will do whatever damage we do sourcing. And then we will take that and just divide it by the number of items. And that's the cost per item. We don't say, okay, well, this handbag I paid 11 for and these shoes I paid five. We don't do it that way. We just go across the board, number of items divided in, and that's your cost. Mm -hmm. So I do try to keep that in mind. But when you have as much inventory as I have, and somebody gives you an offer, you don't remember, like, you don't like, okay, how much did I pay for that? You know, and there have been items that I've done it. And then later went, oh my gosh, I bought that at this other place. And it was not, I just lost money on that. That happens. Yeah. 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 And you don't have to, I mean, the other thing with like a little startup cost is, I mean, you don't need anything to start, but if you're just starting reselling, put yourself through the consignment process and we're going to redo our video and getting started as well. Um, because Everybody wants to know that. But anyway, um, it's a great way to get started and build up a little cash flow. If yeah. you don't have the cash mm-hmm. to be putting out, like if you are just starting reselling, it's a brilliant way to start. You don't need to put anything out. You can kind of get a feel for what sells and you're not risking anything. Yeah. yeah. Sells. You didn't pay for it. I think if you do that combined where they say, start with yourself, right? Start with what's in your house, which we've said, Libby has always recommended that you start yourself as a consigner. Don't just grab your stuff and resell it. Sorry, I'm knocking my water bottle over because my hands are going. She's excited. Um, I'm excited. The adrenaline. Oh, Um, but you, you put yourself through the process as a consigner so that you then kind of know how that's going to flow for you and start with your own stuff. And then you get a little money and maybe you want to go source a few things. And then you never know, things can get tight. Maybe things aren't selling that well. That's where having being consignment ready is the bomb to have, as Libby says, that tool in your toolbox. You can always do that. And that's what I love. If I need to take a break from sourcing, because Samantha tells me I need to take a break from sourcing, <laughs> then I can always, if if my, which isn't going to happen for me anytime soon, but let's just say my inventory gets real low and I don't have things to list. And I don't have the money at that time because that happens to many of us to put into it. Then I pop a little thing on my Facebook or my next door app looking for five consigners. I have a spot for five consigners and boom, in comes my free inventory. Yep. My husband had surgery at the end of last year and just went back to work this week. He has not gotten paid yet from our insurance company for any of his six weeks off, but that's okay. I said, that's cool. I'm going to not, I sourced one time and then we found that out and I was like, nope, not sourcing now. And Mm -hmm. I just loaded up more appointments and just kept on listing and it'll get you through. 
That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. Love that. Real life. I don't love life. that the insurance hasn't settled yet. You yeah, know? I'd still I would still love a check for sure. Cause yeah, I did not I mean, budget to pay our mortgage, but it's, it's know, working. <laughs> they it's like I say when you have to get a, a when you return something, like say you buy something, you put it on the card, you take it back and return it. You know, that money comes off your card like that when you buy it. But then when you return it, it's like, it'll take five to seven business days to get back on your account. Uh, Yeah. Insurance can take your money like that, but it's going to take them a good while to give it back. For sure. Crazy, crazy. All right. Are we ready for number one? Yeah. Kind of got this in low cost. I'm doing a drum roll, y'all. Inventory. Yeah, um, inventory, money mountains, woo, money mountains. I'm still hearing people say death piles, and I just they're they're they don't understand that consignment chats has redone this death pile. Oh, we've thing. rebranded the death pile. We it have rebranded money it. mountain, y'all, because we are on a mission to change negative thinking to positive thinking. Libby catches me all the time. She gets on me because I do it often. I do it too. Yeah. I'm a sarcastic personality kind of person because I just who I am. But Libby will catch me and I'm like, oh, yeah, I could just switch this word with that word. It sounds much better. Money Mountain. Money Mountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The inventory is, I'm going to say endless. The endless Money Mountain. I I mean, Um, Samantha just said that about what she just went through with her husband and being able to just say, Hey, I'm going to take in more consigners. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing about it, it just, it, it, I got, I was saying on our listing party today, actually that I've gotten six, I think just cold messages from Google about consigning. Now I'm not in a position to take, on new consigners right now because I have my existing ones that are just so good. Uh, but yeah, it just keeps, it keeps coming. So um, it's a positive, but you also need to be able to put things um, in place, control it a little bit and, yeah. and know assignment ready and know your limits and your boundaries and what you are and aren't willing to do. And that's yes. otherwise, otherwise your husband looks at you and says, I thought we cleaned out the living room, honey. <laughs> so that's my goal this week. Yeah. <laughs> and that is the beauty of the inventory with this is you can, you if you want to, and you have the mindset to, you can control that inventory. Mm-hmm. You can put the limits, you can do that kind of thing. And I always recommend if you're going to put a call out on social media, be very specific about what you are going to accept, how many items, because it can become a mad scene with inventory. But the beauty about being consignment ready and having your agreement ready is that all those parameters are already written there and you just go right to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yes. if you live in a small space, you could literally just do postcards or jewelry or you can you can niche down to just small items mm-hmm. and you set the parameters and you let people know what you want. So, yep. Yeah. When I get my when I get my uh, Airstream one day and I'm consigning on the road, it's probably just going to be jewelry. <laughs> yes, I love it. Oh, I can't wait to hear the name you come up with for that part of the business. Because <laughs> I am not giving up consignment. It'll just look a little different than it does today. Right. I'll give up jewelry and send it all to you. All right. <laughs> not, not that load you just got. Not the paparazzi no. stuff you just got. Libby no. loves a good jewelry haul. She loves a good jewelry haul. I do. Yeah. I need you to come back here and help me with all mine. Oh, Cheyenne, I know that was number one inventory. I got a quick question for you both. Is there anything you feel like should have been on the list? Is there anything that you are like, if we could put a number six, maybe not replace, but maybe we needed a number six? Um, When I think back of the things that I've learned since number two, one of the newest things that I've learned in the last year, really, that has been life-changing for me is the reseller community support. Yeah. When you are a reseller and you get involved in this community and you find this, your people, the support that we have in this community is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. 
True. And we yes. talk about reseller community. I mean, you might belong to any number of different tribes of resellers. We have a consignment chats community on Facebook. Uh, so you can check out our website and find us there. Um, and we're part of other communities. Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying, I'm trying to start my own in my area because I do run certain Facebook groups. So I've started doing a local meetup every month for just sellers in one of my Facebook groups. Because a lot of them are lonely and they are at home and they are doing this there. And it's nice. It's a good lunch. Once you find that, that, it's it's just irreplaceable and amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I... We have met so many people. It's like I've said it before on other episodes. When we went to Boss Reseller Remix in um, October in Vegas, if I could have had a dollar for every time I met somebody and said, oh, my gosh, you're my people. Oh, my gosh, you're my people. Oh, my <laughs> my trip would have been paid for. The hard part is keeping up with everybody, like, because we yeah. got businesses to run here. So yeah. Like, right? I just want to yeah. just socialize all day yeah and really know everything do. everyone is doing <laughs> well we're just gonna have them all on and spotlight them this year so we get a little time with them so you know so speaking right. of community I, I have like two exciting things let's get the list of palooza out of the way molly had a brilliant idea that she is going to do a march madness list of palooza yes so, ladies, we got to get our brains together on how we're going to make this really cool Samantha, yes, my favorite <laughs> Start ruling this brackets. We got to figure it out. But March Madness, list of Palooza is coming. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be fun. All right. The other thing that happened is we did a spotlight on Matthew Miles. I don't know if you remember this, Den Decor Depot. Um, I think it, I don't know if you, were you on that spotlight, Molly? I don't think I was. Oh, okay. I All right. But was- we did a spotlight. Um, and him and his wife, the Dynamic Decor Depot and the Den Decor Depot opened a store near me and Michelle and I got to go visit them on Sunday. It was amazing to see their dream like coming to fruition. It was also awesome to shop. Uh, <laughs> <I'm> but- <laughs> sure. Did you source some things, Libby? Yeah, I did. You can check out the Facebook page to see. Um, I, didn't, I saw it, but I thought I'd throw it out there. <laughs> But wow, that was so fun. So I'm going to revisit the spotlight and watch that again, because the spotlight we did was actually before he had opened the store. So, you know, we've been watching this kind of unfold a little bit in the community and they're just doing great. And it was just so fun to meet them in person and be able to see to see that, because I know a lot of people have that dream of opening a store. Here's what we're going to do. When we redo their spotlight to get the update on where they are now, we are going to have them on interview style like we normally do. But then you're going to walk through their store and do a video clip of a walk through their store with them. So we can put that to the video, too. Yes, I think everyone needs to see this. It's awesome. And they're still, you know, big online sellers and everything. Awesome. Yeah, Good for them. I have to share one thing about their store. I hope it's not a spoiler alert. But I thought this was so cool if you have a storefront. So they have like, uh, she's into the glassware and everything. And he's into like a lot of NASCAR and knives. And they had the idea, she had the idea of alternating those like setups, those vignettes in the storefront. So that couples would walk around together and, you know, the women would see the men's stuff and the men would see the women's stuff. And yeah, so it's all alternated. So you really see everything. So I thought that was such a cool idea. Oh, that's I can't wait smart. to see that in the video. Yeah, yeah it's very, very thoughtful. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> all right, y'all. Fun to do this 2.0 of our five pros of consignment. I love this. I love that we're going to do more of these from our original starts to the 2.0s. But take a minute before you sign off, you guys, and like, follow, all that good stuff. Click the bell. Make sure you check out our notes. Get the links that you need for all the wonderful places we are. And until next time, my friends. Cheers. Thanks for joining Libby and Molly, the ladies of Consignment Chats. To find out more and keep chatting, find Consignment Chats on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and podcast. As always, you can find all of this information at consignmentchats.com. Thanks for joining us.